Hi, this is uh, Rooney207, and uh, thank you for uh, coming back and visiting, and welcome to um, uh, welcome any of the new subscribers. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I wanted to uh, talk today, and this is more of an expansion of uh, my uh, thoughts uh, from the earlier video I made discussing the many ways to uh, monetize these Linterlands uh, ecosystem. So I, I put a little bit more of intellectual capital thought into it, and I wanted to uh, pitch an idea, a concept, um, and uh, it revolves around the potential for Splinterlands to be a business model. So I wanted to kind of develop some of the initial early use cases. I, I will, going forward, maybe at a future time, uh, work with uh, CPAs and uh, other uh, accountants and folks to potentially build a template for a financial statement. So basically an income uh, statement, um, a balance sheet, and um, look at uh, look at more from an accounting standpoint and how it can be aggregated. So uh, for example, if you were to file or incorporate yourself uh, as an entity, let's say a C corporation, an S corporation, or some kind of check to box like an LLC or sole proprietor. So you can uh, you can actually put all your assets uh, under that entity and be able to shelter it in a way to be able to enumerate your financial um, and be able to spin it off as a, a tax structure on its own as a sole, um, its own entity and if it's a c corporation you can be taxed as a as its own entity and then uh, subject to double taxation where you can extract the money sell uh, your resources in increments and be able to pay yourself or pay um, pay up others do it through this uh, means. And this is just a exploration, a thought on Splinterlands as a business model. So if, uh, if, for instance, um, LAN as an example, uh, you can actually um, build LAN and build it as a model. And LAN becomes more of a resource management from what the leadership and what Yaba Matt had uh, discussed on the uh, from the town hall and extracts from uh, some of the discussions on uh, Splinter La uh, Lands Discord and some of the map chat. Uh, essentially, land can be a resource management, and you can either uh, have it as a subsidiary of one of one of your business model, or you can incorporate it if you just wanted to have as a single line item uh, business model, and. So yeah, land can potentially be that uh, business model for you, but. If you're like a typical uh, Splinterlands player, you'll have other assets. You'll have tokens like SPS. So you can accumulate uh, SPS on your balance sheet and you can uh, c continue um, to grow that. And uh, and also, so the, the various, uh, you can continue to acquire DEC, you can arbitrage, you can play the card market or the non-card market aspect of the game. You can, um, you can integrate your... Uh, your blogging piece, your music, your the various talents that you have. And I, I think this is why I'm so bullish long-term on Splinterlands and why I think no matter the scenario, I, I believe in long-term uh, and uh, what the uh, principles and the views, the strategy, long-term thoughts on the and the evolutionary curve for what uh, Splinterlands can be as a, a business model. Because I think uh, Yaba Matt and uh, Aggie, I, I think they, they have it right and they they're willing to work towards it. Um, I think sometimes they take uh, really tough criticisms uh, from. Uh, I, I know just the uh, the saltiness of the community, and sometimes I look at uh, Map Chat and I see some of the comments and so sometimes i kind of look at myself from their uh, in their shoes and i i th just think that maybe the comments are a little bit harsh at times and um but i i think in the long term i think that they'll probably be proven right in terms of developing and th this is so unique to web3 because i think i play other games too and i i think the uh, the only two games so far that I've come across that has the potential to be a business model uh, would be uh, Axie Infinity and uh, Splinterlands are the only two because uh, an example is like um, Gala, for, for instance. Uh, Gala, you can you can hold its token, you can have the um, the the validator, the the nodes, the Gala nodes, and but there's in terms of how the revenue and the income statement gets rolled up in the consolidated view from that perspective of a macro, uh, it goes to, in principle, Gala versus 
uh, Splinterlands, they're willing to share some of their revenue, some of their growth. And I, I think you, you also take a larger percentage of risk. And also when you look at the the economy, the game token, the market, the market capitalization of Splinterlands compared to the other ones, they're significantly smaller because Splinterlands as a company has not invested as much uh, from a marketing standpoint. So I, I think you also carry that um, the additional expense too. When when you look at, I, I think when you look at the profitability and the EBITDA of the other gaming studios and the other games, I, I think once you look at the details uh, from if you were to invest in a nasdaq company i i think it would it would show that um splinterlands will be a business a much stronger and a much better business model that can withstand uh, three bear markets and can still continue to go and i think the the other companies they'll have a higher debt uh, ratio as well debt to equity um, so I, I think depending on the multiplier and how, how you want to look at the other gaming studios and the other games th themselves, I, I think Splinterlands will be um, uh, probably right now it, it is uh, potentially the preeminent uh, business model. If you're interested in buying a business or building a business to be able to sell or to be able to uh, pass to your your kids and your heirs, I, I think Splinterlands from a Web3 perspective um, has a lot of potential. So uh, this is not financial advice. I think it's something that everyone should do their own research. And it's, it is something that uh, I've been uh, thinking about. And I just wanted to kind of talk through uh, some of my ideas around this aspect of it. So you can create bots and those bots will earn income for you. And uh, as as we see with the changes in the rental market and some of the structure, some of the land. I believe many of the bot owners, um, myself included, I have a few bots and I'm consolidating the accounts uh, to get into uh, potentially the, um, the higher earning ones. And even for my cards for rentals, I'm merging the BCX. Um, so I, I think there's a consolidation and with that, it may take a certain amount of time. It may take 18 to 24, or even potentially 36 months for the accounts to reach its height again uh, in the absence of huge growth, a uh, huge new investor and uh, new amounts of uh, player base. I think um, Nifty Arcade and I I think the uh, Splinterlands uh, Steam team, leadership team and the DAO um, should consider doing more, uh, significantly more to uh, to add to the player base because I, I think there's definitely an appetite as uh, Nifty, uh, Nifty Arcade can uh, can demonstrate. They put up these um, accounts uh, and they're basically gobbled up uh, pretty quickly. Uh, you can also eventually, uh, and for guilds, you can invest in, uh, to build, uh, put your put your accounts and participate in guilds, you'll earn uh, SPS, you'll earn merits. Those accounts uh, will account for something. You can do the license, um, the validator node, the SPS uh, chain. So I, I think from if you were to build a business model around this, you can you can build all the uh, all your assets uh, on the balance sheet and you can you can see the growth. Uh, you can invest um, in the liquidity pool, uh, depending on what you have. You can buy into uh, the Hive um, ecosystem, the Hive token. You can um, buy the Hive block, um, backed dollar uh, perspective, and you can earn the 20%. So you, you can get a lot of these returns. You can do the partnerships with um, the, you know, spl various Splinterlands partnerships like the Splex, the uh, Peak Monsters, the Splint or Forge, um, you can earn through rank battles. Um, you can even extend them once the uh, Soul Keep game uh, goes live. You can play that and you can stake your assets and you can get, uh, if you stake uh, SPS, you'll get the uh, GLX, the GLGT uh, token as well. Um, you can uh, participate as a streamer uh, on their Switch TV. Uh, you can um, do tournaments. Uh, you can work for Splinterlands. You can um, join uh, guilds that give you tokens like YGG and uh, YGG SPL through, uh, through that um, piece of it. So you, you can build all of this stuff and put it on your balance sheet and they earn for you and then you can accrue it. Yeah, you can treat it as a business model. So I, I think Splinterlands is very unique as a 
as a game uh, uh, perspective. I, I think there's nothing like it right now um, uh, in Web3. So I think Splint. So um, I, I hope people will look at it. I'm curious to get your uh, thoughts and feedback as well on what you think from viewing Splinterlands as not necessarily a a traditional game, but a business model. Uh, let me know from that um, perspective. And thank you so much for your time and have a wonderful day.